All right, welcome back. We're on lesson 1.4 in phase changes, weird water events. And we're going to start with our warm up and hop right on in. So let's move it along. So for our warm up, we're going to read the text about Ellie, her friend, and the puddle. Think about what Ellie's evidence shows, then respond to the question. I'm going to hop over to Amplify. So on the way to school, Ellie sat on the bench waiting for her friend. She noticed snow all around her. Later that day, Ellie and her friend walked home and passed by the same bench. Ellie's friend said, there's a puddle in front of the bench. It must have rained while we were at school creating this puddle. Ellie disagreed. She had a different claim about the puddle and how it formed based on her evidence from her observations. Ellie's evidence was as follows. One, the park was covered in snow that morning, but not in the afternoon. Two, Ellie did, didn't need her jacket on the way home from school because it was so warm. And three, it was a sunny day. It was sunny all day. Do you think the puddle was formed by rain? Why or why not? Pause the video so you can answer this question. How did you respond to the warm up? Talk about it with your group. As you saw just before we um, pause the video at the warm up, you saw this word on card two of part one, your warm up, refute, to provide evidence that goes against a claim. So when you're making an argument, you are ref and you may refute a claim, saying that it's not true, and here's your evidence to go against it. Scientists may refute claims with evidence. Sometimes the evidence is based on refuting or going against the claim. Sometimes refuting evidence may show how an aspect of a claim is not possible. Or at some point, scientists may decide to eliminate or get rid of a claim if the refuting evidence is strong enough. However, ideas may change as new evidence is gathered. So we're going to look at activity two, which is active reading, weird water events. So I moved back over to Amplify and I'm actually in part two. And in part two, it, it has the link right here for you to get to the article. Now you should have a digital copy and you should also have a paper copy. Um, I should have provided you with a paper copy. If you didn't get one yet, you can use the digital copy. You can also find this article set in that digital resources section. Now, as you read, you want to do a couple of things. Think carefully about what you're reading and pay attention to what you understand. As you read, you're going to annotate the text and make a record of your thinking. So challenge, uh, highlight challenging words, add notes to the record. Um, add questions, make connections to your own experience. Examine all the visual representations carefully and consider how they go together with that text. After you read, discuss what you have read with others to help you better understand that text. You may even put questions. You may even see a cross-cutting concept in there. You could add that in as well with your notes. So remember, we're considering the investigation questions in these three claims. So we have these three claims that were put up on the forum to answer this question. What happens to the molecules of a substance when it changes phase? So one gentleman said, or person, said claim one, I think the molecules in the substance disappear or no longer exist when a substance changes phase. I think this is because when the substance goes from liquid to gas, I can no longer see it. Claim number two says, I think that molecules in a substance move differently when a substance changes phase. I think this is because when you tilt the container they are in, a liquid gas and solid don't move the same way. And then claim three, I think that the molecules in the substance change into a new kind of molecule during a phase change. I think this is because liquids look different from a gas or a solid. So these are the three claims that you're going to be trying to get evidence to back up which one you think is the best. So today we're going to read the Weird Water article and you're going to collect evidence based on that. If you find things in the article that may help you, you're going to want to underline and highlight those things um, to prepare for you to refute or agree with one of these claims. Okay, and I already kind of explained how to actively read, so we're going to move on to um, how to do it. So here's the title, Weird Water. So, um, Weird Water, what does that make you think? What's weird about water? Okay, I would put that as my annotation for it because that title made me kind of think, well, what's weird about it? So then I'm going to read the first paragraph aloud. Water is amazing stuff and it does some amaz amazing things. It flows, it sparkles like a diamond and seems to appear and disappear like magic. These are all large scale observations, macro scale, of water's appearance that we can make with the human eye. We can also think about water and all the substances on another scale that we usually cannot see, the molecular scale. 
Molecules are too tiny to see, but they are very important. Water is made of molecules, and so is almost everything else on Earth. The appearance of water is determined by the way the molecules are moving. So at first it was difficult to visualize how water molecules move. Then I remembered seeing molecules move in different ways in the sim. So I highlighted this section, the way the water molecules are moving. In the sim, the molecules varied in how they moved. They weren't always the same. Now I'll read the second paragraph aloud. You might think of water as a liquid, but water can actually exist in three phases, liquid water, solid ice, and a gas called water vapor. No matter what the phase of water is, the water is still made out of the same molecules. They just move differently. So there was a diagram at the start of this text that I think relates to that second paragraph, which describes molecules in each phase of water. I know that scientists communicate ideas by using diagrams with shapes and colors and lines. Um, I wonder what these lines and circles means. What is this image showing me? So I might annotate and say just that. What does this diagram show and how does it relate to the text that I'm reading? So now you're going to read in groups. Each group member is going to be reading a different article and later you're going to share what you learned about the water event that you read about. So right now you should assign the different uh, the different articles to the people at your table. There are five articles. So you're gonna to wanna to find five people at your table that can read each different article. And you're probably gonna have more than one person reading a few of these if you have eight people at your table. But you wanna make sure that you share out about these articles. Remember to make sure you follow those active reading guidelines and you're making notes and adding questions and things that we discussed earlier. If you need a refresher, this is actually on your lesson four. Um, or 1.4 activity two. We're going, going to go on to, all right, so activity three for this lesson is actually gonna be a should do. So if you get to this point, this is one of our should do's. So now you're gonna look uh, over your annotations and choose one that you can discuss with your group. We're actually gonna put a couple of hashtags on it. If you f go through your article and find one thing that you'd be willing to share with a partner or somebody at your group, um, talk to them about that annotation and have them talk to you about theirs. Once you do that, you should put hashtag discussed beside what you both discussed. Then choose an interesting fact that you came up with or thing that you discussed and be ready to present that um, to your whole group. So you should do part of this with a partner and then you can share the other ones with your whole group. And whoever that is, whoever is working um, at the do should do section and is working on this at your table. So look over those annotations. We already discussed this. This is actually just activity three in your Amplify lesson. What interesting or unanswered questions do you still have about the article? You can ask those of your teacher if you still do have some that are unanswered. Do you think the strategy of making deeper connections was actually helpful to you? Why or why not? So review your annotations and answer the reflection question in activity three, and this should be on card number two. Please make sure you answer that. Please be sure to make sure you check in the lesson and see what your other should do's and aspire to do's are. They're on Canvas. And I'll see you next time.